Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy here in central Missouri. First week of February. Finally got rid of the snow. And today it's going to hit, feels like 70 out here. My gosh. Got all my shirts off, my hats off, and down to my t shirt. And uh, I'm happy to see the warmer weather and get rid of the snow and graze this stockpile that's not covered up with ice or snow. Um, <clears throat> this is a, where we're going to be moving them in the morning. I just put this in by myself. I walked it in. I didn't use the four wheeler. I've got a wire you can see going up over the hill there. I think you can see it. Yep. And uh, that wire's at 28 inches. That's what I run all my wires at for cattle. Single wire, temporary fence. And uh, this uh, pond, this is a lease farm. Uh, the landowner and I went in and split the cost of digging this out. And you can see the, the pile of mud right over there. It's all forage now, but there was a lot of mud came out of that pond. It was about a foot deep in water and seven foot of mud. Uh, we dug it out to about 13 foot deep. It's got a two inch PVC pipe in the bottom of it. And then I poured a concrete pad back here and I've got landscaping timbers keeping that dirt. And there's a little bit of rock under that concrete and uh, this is a 400 gallon tank. We don't drain the tanks in the winter. Now this is central Missouri. You couldn't even think about doing this in Minnesota or Wisconsin. You get too cold up there, but look at this. See that big old ice cube on top? See, I just moved it. See the, the float, it's already melted away from the float because the float, I can push down on that. And I've got a, a valve. First thing I do when I put in a pipe to a dam, is I put it inside of a, a culvert and there's a valve down in there. And uh, I should have a cap on there because one of these days there'll be a possum in there and I have to throw it out. He'll get down there and can't get out. But today there was a field mouse and then I got him out. <clears throat> but from there, I came over here and uh, wasted some money right there. <laughs> that is a, a 20 gallon frost free tank. It's got a four foot culvert right in the middle of it going down on the ground and the heat of the ground keeps it from freezing and it works the problem is right here 20 gallons that's what it holds and we're watering 295 head in the winter or even winter summer it, it really makes a difference in the summertime you're never going to keep up with your cattle they're going to be standing in line waiting to get a drink because it can't keep up. Because this has only got, you know, it goes from two inch to, uh, there's the bottom of it. I've got it shut off. That goes from two inch down to a three quarter inch feeder line. Well, if that was pressurized, if I was on pressurized city water or I had a pump, a well, that tank might stand a chance. But still, look at that. You've only got two drinker points. That's it. One on each side. Here... I've got a 400 gallon tank. I've counted 17 cows around that. Okay, I wish I hadn't put that in. That's $750 for that, that uh, tank. And uh, a lot of work. I raised it up, you know, above the pad here. So in the winter time when the cattle drank and it froze around it, it wasn't freezing where I couldn't shut it off. Because if you raise that platform up, all the debris runs off and you can still get to those those are your drains right there and there's a shut off I've got plumbed in you know there's a steel plate under there that's how long it's been since I used it but folks that's a lot of money I could have poured a lot more con uh, you know this is a uh, three yards right here this concrete and I could have had my tank in the middle of the concrete instead of over here on the edge it's still okay I mean the cows can drink over here Okay, they, they still got room to stand because their chest is right up against the tank. And so I'll come in in the morning, we'll take an axe and cut this off. That, that big old ice cube on there is probably about four inches thick. But if we'd have drained that and then turned it on when we come here tomorrow, that pipe would have been froze all the way down on the ground. We wouldn't be able to use it the rest of the winter. So we let it freeze up. When we come to that tank, we cut that ice cube off. And then after that... While we're on this tank, you're not going to cut off, oh, maybe three or four inches to be the deepest. And that's if it gets down to five, five below zero or something. Okay. I've got a drain right here. That'll be coming out in the spring, and that's when we clean them. 
and we use Clorox and all that debris in there will be cleaned out and uh, it'd be nice clean water but I wanted to show you what we did here so we've got a, a wire gap right here on this side of the tank okay I've got a uh, I always put a step in there so they can see it they don't walk through it and then I made a skirt there's a skirt around here and I also put a hydrant in I put hydrants in in case something would ever happen to my frost free tank or my water over here my water tank I could go in here and put a garden hose on there put a big tank up here and I could water my livestock until I got my bigger tank fixed, whatever that might be. And so I've also got a, a gate over here, and I've already opened it. That's where the cows will be coming in in the morning. They're going to be drinking from here. And then there's a, a double, there's a lane here. It's about 30, I don't know, that may be 40 feet wide. It's from there over to that side, and it goes all the way down to the old famed Cockleburr field, which is out there in front of us. It goes clear to the blacktop over there. And so they can come out of that old cockleburr field, which isn't cockleburrs anymore. It's beautiful grass. But while I've got them in this top paddock, I don't want them going up and down this lane over here while they're up here. So I just take a poly, a poly braid, put in this temporary little wire across here. And when they go into that bottom, I come over here and get my, my Greg Judy handle. <laughs> These are the handles I made years ago. That is a piece of holly, hollow epoxy uh, tubing with epoxy poured in the middle. It makes an awesome handle. Ugh, let me get off of there. Look at that. See, there's epoxy poured in there. And that's a piece of high tensile wire. And it's just tied on. Folks, you can run over it with a tractor, pickup truck, ATV. I don't care what you run over it with. Stomp on with a cow. You're not going to break that handle. I mean, it is one heavy duty handle. Yeah. Anyway, I've got a couple hundred of those I made back when you know, I didn't have any money. You had to make do with what you had. So that's, that's when you start thinking outside the box. And that's what I built was those. Anyway, so down there by that big tree, there's another gap that goes to the left that gets all that bottom over there. So I've got one, two, three, four. There's four paddocks hooked onto this one pond. And uh, <coughs> the owner and I dug that out in 2001. And we've been using it ever since. Um, the pond is in pristine condition. It's got fish attractants in it, cedar trees. We always fence it off where the cows can't waddle off in the pond because they will destroy your pond water. But look at this. This is a nice surface. The cows can get up here and drink. They're not going to tear anything up. And then get them a nice clean drink of water without getting mucked up in the mud. I hate mud. I don't want it on my cattle. I don't want it on me. Keep the mud off your livestock, folks. They're going to be healthier. Just remember one thing. Mud breeds disease. Scours. Let your cow's udders get covered in mud and then let a baby calf start sucking on them. You're going to have scours. And once you get them, it's a tough deal. Sometimes you don't save the calf. Sometimes you do. Calves... It's just a lot of stress on the livestock and you. It's caused by mud. Keep them out of darn mud. Isn't this beautiful though? I mean, I came by uh, another guy's running cattle and uh, his whole pasture, nothing but mud, but they've been there all winter. He hasn't moved them. And look what our cows get to come into in the morning. Look at that. <laughs> First week of February. <sighs> Some clovers yep yum 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 good stuff but I gave them a strip here it's about 150 feet wide and it's about 800 feet long and so they're gonna be on here and this has had a uh, 60 days rest and we won't be back here again until May but we're gonna start here by the water no back fence there's the water and the next day of course that pond will be fenced off we're just gonna keep moving uh, back west about 150 feet at a time by 800 feet long. And we're going to strip graze off this fescue. But it's wet, folks, and you don't want to tighten your cattle down on this wet ground. You will destroy your farm. And you're going to have a ton of weeds the next year because you pugged it so bad. And your grasses won't have any grass. You're just going to have weeds. So don't do that. Um, I see an issue right here. I'm always looking for issues. We've had a lot of water this winter. Of course, we haven't grazed this for 60 days. 
this wasn't here when we left. I'm getting a little bit of erosion right here. And it's all coming out of that pond spillway. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and fence this off. I'm not going to let them muck that up anymore. So I'm going to put some hay on that. Slough that off a little bit. If it was dry, I'd put cattle on it. But it's so wet, they're just going to soup it. I don't want to do that. I'm going to put some hay on that. Look at this. If you let the cattle have this. This is the spillway coming out of that pond. If you let them have that. All you're going to have is a wrecked spillway. So always be on the lookout for stuff like this. You know, it's just part part of being a grazer. When it's really wet and muddy, you got to put yourself in the cow's feet. If you weighed a thousand pounds and you're walking around on a, a foot, let's say three to four inches in diameter, what are you going to do to this? You're going to tear the heck out of it. And the cows don't think. You've got to be the thinker for them. Identify problems before it is a problem, and you're going to get along a lot better on your grazing operation. Now, see, in the wintertime, this is some really good stock pollen, so we're going to put that wire right next to them cattails. Okay, all the way up through there, and let them, let them eat this. That makes high-quality forage coming back, because I don't want to leave all that duff here for the whole rest of the winter. Man, look at that grass out here. Not just grass, but... Mm -mm -mm. Folks, it's a wonderful life when you can feed your animals this and you're not opening up your pocketbook to do it. Okay? For $40 a bale, six bales a day, that's $240 a day that I'm saving. And everybody says, oh, it doesn't matter if you got big cows or little cows. Yeah, it does. Because when you can graze in the wintertime, everybody else got them up in a sacrifice lot because they don't want to destroy their farm. You're moving ahead. You're moving ahead. You're keeping that money in your pocket. You're keeping that hay money in your pocket, folks. Your ground can feed these animals if you learn how to manage your grass. This doesn't start in the fall. That's what we're going to be teaching at our grazing school here coming in May. How, to, how do you get this grass? And how do you manage to where you have it every year so you don't have to feed so much hay? Maybe ice and snowstorms and that's it. And your animals can do that. Look at that. They're all up there grazing. That's what you want. They're all up there grazing. I'm going to walk up and peek over the hill. See what it looks like. It looks like they're all... There's nothing laying down. I just moved them maybe uh, 20 minutes ago. They're pretty happy campers, I can tell you that. You don't hear any bawling. Um, one of the things I'm seeing, uh, a lot of the bird life, the turkeys, flipping cow pats. Those are wild turkeys. I like to see the cow pats flipped. Um, somebody uh, sent an email the other day asking me about dragging, harrowing your pastures. Is it is it cost effective to harrow your pastures? Absolutely not. Not when you got cell biology. Why would you do that? It's fossil fuel. It's time. And folks, time is money. If you're spending your day sitting on a foil or a tractor dragging your pastures when you could be building fence or maybe putting in better water for your animals or maybe developing civil pastures so you have some more grazing days in the summer, why in the world would you want to harrow a pasture? You get good soil biology, they're going to take care of that. You won't even find your manure passing 30 to 40 days because the worms and your soil microbes have already ate everything up. So no, dragging your pastures is, I feel, is a complete waste of money. Shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't have to do that. Man, look at that. It's a little jersey. <laughs> look at her. Picky little girl. Mm. Oh, see her? She found that little bit of green right there. A little bit of green. She's getting it. She's a pretty little cow. Jersey's always, you know, all dairies. I'm I'm partial to beef cows because they always have more weight on them. But uh, she's not a bad little cow for a jersey. She's going to be having a south pole calf next year and freshening and milking. That is a A2, A2 jersey which means you can drink that milk if you're lactose intolerant 
everything here is eating. And the baby calves, or the younger calves, not the babies, but the younger calves are laying down sleeping. And all the older stuff is out eating. Because if they don't eat it, there's going to be another cow come along and eat it. So it's a competition thing. When you get them in here this tight, uh, they're on here about an acre and a half, maybe. Yeah, they're not. it's not even more than an acre and a half. 295 head in here. Everything's competing. They're all competing with each other. That's what you like. It's a lot more even grade. Look at the weight on that cow. First week of February, she's got a calf sucking on her. She's keeping on that kind of condition. But, you know, she's a frame score two and a half. She probably weighs around, I don't know, 950 to 1,000 pounds. She's just about as big around as she is tall. Folks, you got to breed gut. If you don't have gut on your cows, you got a high maintenance cow. You got a lot of leg underneath there. That air you can't sell for anything. The air underneath the belly and the ground, learn to hate it. The more air you have underneath the belly of your cows, the higher maintenance they are. They're going to cost you money. Get rid of them. Keep the cows that's got some gut. There's a nice bull that's got some gut. Oh man, look at the gut on him. <laughs> He's gut. Well, if they got gut, they can pass that on to their daughters. I'm going to sign off of here. I got my paddock put in for in the morning. The cows are all happy. I'm happy because I'm grazing. The snow is gone. And folks, it's a beautiful day to be a grazer here in central Missouri. Everyone have a great day.